commit ourselves to the Toastmasters promise, which we usually read, and then we, I, I would read, and then the uh, members would confirm it back, just to say, I will. So is it, I do. I will. I will. I will, not I do. You must get to my <laughs> So I'll first read the Toastmasters promise and then I'll ask everybody to introduce themselves. As a, toast, as a member of Toastmasters International and Braxton Breakfast Toastmasters Club, I promise to attend club meetings regularly. I do. I will. I will. I will. To prepare all of my projects to the best of my ability, basing them on the Toastmasters education program. I will. I will. I will. To prepare for and fulfill meeting assignments, I will. I will. I will. To provide fellow members with helpful, constructive evaluation, I will. I will. I will. The club maintain the positive, friendly environment necessary for all members to learn and grow. I will. I will. To serve my club as an officer when called upon to do so. I will. To treat my fellow club members and guests and our guests with respect and courtesy. I will. I will. To bring guests to club meetings so they can see the benefits of Toastmasters membership offers. I will. I will. To adhere to the guidelines and rules for all Toastmasters educational and recognition programs. I will. I will. To act within Toastmasters' core values of integrity, respect, service, and excellence during the conduct of all Toastmasters meetings. I will. Um, I will. That's, I'd like to request us to introduce ourselves. I'll start with myself. I'm Tandegam Tlange. I'm the, I'm, I'm the member and the president of the club. And over to Mr. Dino. I'm the treasurer of the, the club currently, and you have to tell us tell the club something about us. I don't know something interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I had a a lovely family gathering last night, and it's lovely to get sitting down with family members, older people. And then listen to listen about their, uh, their experiences back in uh, back when they were children, and we were just I was listening about uh, they told a story about them living on a concrete. My family's in precox, so concrete. Uh, they lived in a concrete jungle, but literally it was they lived on a concrete back tree, so that no trees, no grass, nothing. And they just spoke about the the life that they lived and the hazards. And it was very interesting. And how now being a parent, I would never let my child run around the way they did. But interesting to have uh, that, those family stories and how things have been changing. Oh, that's me. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kole Swahili. I am a member of the Rhinestein Breakfast Club. I am looking forward to today's session. Thank you. Thank you, Kole. What's wrong? Yes? Good morning. My name is Ida Shaba. Good morning. It's my first day here, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Guest. Morning. Um, my name is Ruth Fields. I'm quite excited to be here. I just want to just say join and also see what I can get um, from the first master. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll join the club. And our members online will start with Mr. Rick, our distinguished guest. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rick Robenheimer. I'm a member at Mauritshwe Toastmasters Club. I'm a frequent visitor here in the past, along with my now late wife, Judith, sadly uh, lamented. 
and I'm looking forward to today's videos. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Rose? Rose? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm Tinyiko Rosemary Baloyi. Uh, I'm also a member of a Brainstein Breakfast a Toast Lab. And yeah, looking forward to learn more and improve and yeah, be the better version of myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Good morning, amazing people. Uh, my name is Matthew. I prefer just being called Matt, just Matt, because sometimes when people say my name, I can actually hear them say the single T in my name. And my name has double T. So when, I when people call me, I prefer to say Matt, because there's emphasis on the double T, Matt. Uh, I'm a member of the, of the uh, Brands and Breakfast Club and the BPE. So yeah, that is me. Back to you, Madam President. And actually, I was just thinking, I should have asked you to introduce you last because there's like a whole paragraph when introducing you. <laughs> and also to say that Matthew is our past president, right? Yes, and the youngest member of the club. No. For now, yes. And then uh, over to Bonnie. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Bonnie Shabalala. Um, it's my first time joining your Toastmasters um, session. Uh, looking forward uh, to the session and hopefully uh, looking forward to joining the club, the Brainston Club. Thank you. And last but not least, Tanya. Good morning. Hi, um, there's no way I'm putting my video on Tandeka, I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm fully committed to the oath of um, uh, Toastmasters and uh, at the moment I, I'm terribly vision impaired. Uh, yes, I am still here to do my thing and I phoned a few of you guys and see is to say I will participate as much as I can um, and I'll do the best I can. But it's uh, generally, uh, even if I can't do something, and I would possibly like to try a table topic, but it's going to be pushing me very hard. Um, I think the most important thing is to arrive, attend, be prepared, and... Um, I would say extend yourself, even though circumstances might not be ideal and my circumstances are not ideal. But I'm here, Tzendeko. I am committed to the oath. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. And allow ourselves to be vulnerable so that we can learn and then grow. So thank you so much for the commitment, living the values of Toastmasters. Without wasting. Uh, uh, Tandeka, can I can I say one more thing? Yes, yes. I'm journeying a lot at the moment, and I I am uh, someone who likes uh, journeying and uh, accelerating um, journey. Um, vulnerability is an interesting word that's been quite damaging. And I think I sp uh, spoke about this in the last meeting or the one before. Um, and I've exchanged it to openness, which is far more positive. And maybe as a club, we need to look at, yes, of course, we're, we're open to people uh, who want to be vulnerable. Clearly I am. Um, but it's been more helpful using the word openness. Um, I don't know. So, something for us to, for you as a committee to think about. Um, yeah, anyway, just wanted to share. Because like I'm very really vulnerable at the moment <laughs> and I'd like to be rather open. Okay, there you go, I'll stop now. You know, 
thanks thanks for that uh, input Tanya I think that's a, that's something to think about and indeed you are our grammar today so already doing your no 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 I'm not I, I can't do anything oh is it okay no it's sorry fine. I have no vision at the moment. Okay, uh, no, that's fine. Uh, no? That... You know, we spoke about this. Yes, 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 yes. I'm, uh, I'm taking on that role. Don't worry. Thank you. Uh, to to Lisa, because he's there. The toastmaster yeah. will go on all of that. Don't worry about that. But we appreciate um, the the input, the um, thinking about the word vulnerability. And openness, right? So with that, I'd like to welcome all of us and declare the meeting open and hand over to our lovely Toastmaster of the day, Mr. Matthew Myla. Oh, thank you very much, Madam President. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for our female president because the future is female. I didn't hear hands clapping. Did anybody clap hands? I didn't hear it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Super amazing. Fellow Toastmasters and dear guests, it is my privilege and well, and uh, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you all to the Bryanston Breakfast Toastmasters Club. I think we're the only Toastmasters Club that can actually claim we're a Toastmasters Club. What do I mean by this? I remember when I first told my stepmom that I am going to a Toastmasters club and the first club, the first question that she asked me is like, are you guys a club where you just eat toast? I was like, lame, <laughs> lame, but no, we're actually a public speaking club. But with us, because we serve breakfast, I think we can claim that privilege of saying, we also do eat toast at our Toastmasters club. For the benefit of the guests, I would like to explain the structure of the meeting. The meeting is divided into three sections. The first is the prepared speech section where members will be delivering speeches on projects and paths that they have chosen. For today, we're actually going to be watching a video of one of the world champion public speaking speeches, but more about that a bit later. The second section of the meeting is the table topic session. In the table topic session, members and you as guests can come through and practice thinking on your feet. Our president has already done this very brilliantly by asking you to introduce yourself at the beginning of the meeting. We believe that speaking from the get-go is one of the best ways to start your public speaking journey and start building that confidence. So by the time we get to the table topics section, we now know that you are warmed up and you are ready to take on that role. So for our guests, I will be calling on, or your table topics master will be calling on you to partake in one to two minute speeches during the table topics section. The third section of our meeting is the final session and one of the most important. This is the evaluation section. In the evaluation section, we will be getting feedback on the speech that was delivered, as well as on other aspects of the meeting, such as the time, the R's and the ums, and the very good or bad use of grammar. We will also have a general evaluator who will give us an overview of everything that has taken place today. Evaluations are important because evaluation is the breakfast of champions. And part of our breakfast as champions is evaluations. Without further ado, I will now move on to our meeting theme for today and then introduce our role players. Our meeting theme for today is we are all storytellers. This is a beautiful meeting theme. And if I do say so myself, and I'll tell you why it's such a beautiful theme. Firstly, because... I came up with a theme, I thought about it, and I only create beautiful things, so I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> but the second reason is because I've been visiting a number of Toastmasters clubs over the last three, six months. I have visited about, I'm just closing in on 150 clubs in local and internationally, 
And something that has come up for me that I've learned as a public speaker is that we are all storytellers and we come yeah. to masters to develop our story. A lot of the time, most of the new members that are visiting clubs or coming into clubs are really scared. They are shy because they feel like they're going to be judged and they feel like they're not really good at public speaking. We tend to overthink this idea of what it means to speak in public, what it means to communicate. But I realized that some of the best speakers in the world, some of the best speakers in the clubs that I've visited are all storytellers. And all they do is tell their story. So in today's session, even when we go into the table topics, I'd like you to keep that in mind. You are a storyteller. And today, yes, you are here to pr practice public speaking, but more importantly, you're here to practice how to tell us your story. Mm. Moving on, I'd like to now introduce our role players for the day. I'd like to start off with our timer. Our timer for today, uh, just getting that out, should have had that out already. Our timer for today is going to be timer, 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 Tandeka. Tandeka, please explain your role for today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Postmaster. And good morning again, you know, Postmaster. My role as a timekeeper, I'm going to be listening to every role player. As, as you know, that you speak within an allocated time period. So the table topics, for instance, are two minutes. So at And one. Yes. So at one minute, I'm going to show you the green card. And then at one and a half, one minute, 30 seconds, we're going to show the city, I mean, the orange card, don't know, it's amber or yellow. And then at time up, once you've exited, when you get to the two minutes, I'm going to show the red part. Thank you, Mr. Table Topics. Thank you, Mr. Topics. Thank you very much, Madam Timer. For the benefit of our guests, whenever you hear the word time, you must always think Toastmasters because Toastmasters are always synonymous with time. Next, we've got our grammarian and our counter who will help us keep track of the good use of language and how many R's and arms and likes. I know we all find those in our speeches. So today our grammarian and R counter will help us keep track of that. Rick, could I please ask you to take on the role of R counter grammarian? I suppose so. I have some timing cards somewhere. Uh, uh, oh, I'm not doing timing, I, I am grammaring it, yes, okay. Uh, in which case, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a combined role. The, the what purpose of the R counter is to look for crutch words and tell you where there are uh, <clears throat> crutch words that you use, like so, uh, are, um, uh, you know, and so on, and then and count them and tell you how many you did. And as a grammarian, my job will be to listen for good and bad use of English, to commend the former and make constructive suggestions for improving the latter. Do you also want a word of the day? You can suggest one, yes. Well, I don't have one to hand. Um, we can go with the one on the agenda if you don't. Is there one on the agenda? Uh, yeah. 
didn't see one on the agenda. Oh, euphoria. Yes, all right. I will listen for your use of the word euphoria, and I will be euphoric if you use it. I would encourage people to uh, make a celebratory noise or a wave or something when other members of the meeting use the word euphoria, and then I will count them and tell you who did the best at the end of the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Rick, our archonter grammarian. The word of the day is euphoria, and the definition has been posted in the chat. As we move on to yes, description. Euphoria, a feeling or state of intense excitement and happiness. Got it. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Uh, spotlight me. Spotlight me. Ah, there we go. All right. Now we have introduced the team and we will move on to our first section of the meeting. Remember those three sections I spoke about? Now we're going to be moving into the prepared section of our meeting. In the prepared section for our speaker today, we have a video from the world champion of public speaking, Cyril Dim Jr. Cyril Dim Jr. is originally from Zimbabwe and I, after him winning his public speaking journey, I followed him a bit to see what has been his progress and journey to getting to become the world champion of public speaking. And something that I noticed about Cyril Dilm Jr. is that the speech that he delivered at the world championship is a speech that he has pra been practicing throughout his journey as Toastmasters. May not have been the exact speech, but the format was the same. He was practicing the art of storytelling. I'd like us to now have a look at this video by Cyril Dim Jr. Sorry, Matt. Can I ask that I just give a quick, because the evaluation is going to be around Robin, if I can just give a quick little snippet of what we should be looking out for when we, so when it comes to evaluations, we can actually just give some valuable input. Makes my job easier. Thank you for welcoming me to the front, guys. So, sorry, Matt, I'm kind of jumping in here. I do apologize for that. Uh, but I think it will add a lot of value for the, the newcomers in the room to see uh, what evaluations are about. Because ideally, if you say a speech up here, yes, you hear presenting and it's fantastic. But when you go back and you sit back in your chair, your mind starts wondering about how did I actually do? And you, for me, I'm my worst critic. So I actually start complaining and like, no, you were swaying too much. No, your hands were all over the place. No, uh, I use um and ahs a lot. So clearly the whole speech was just a big uh, The thing is, is that that's your perception of it. We call it a sandwich structure, whereby they give you something good that you've done, something uh, Dido, do you guys? You know? end off with something that you can and ideally yes so I'm going to continue Matt, it seems like the signal in this room is a little bit bad but just for the, the two individuals I'll just continue and that is just going to work on her signal I can see the, the bar is a flashing yellow 
Yeah. It's just the one PC. The other one was still fine. Okay. The speaker one was the problem. Are you on your, uh, are you not on the Wi-Fi? Mm. You want to log into the Wi-Fi? Okay. It comes and goes. So in Toastmasters, we when presenting, you actually focusing on multiple facets. And I'm going to give you the ones at the top of my head I can remember is one of the things is a vocal variety. So is the person just speaking in a constant monotone? And kind of object, I fall asleep when that happens. It's a nice white noise. You don't want that. You want someone to slow down the voice, speak a bit softer, get into the characters, which I'm pretty sure this person will get into. Or he speaks a lot louder. You start having these larger images because his voice is starting to project. Another one is hand gestures. Is he adding value to the story? Okay, that's the second one. Third one, uh, which I'm going to stop after this, is the general flow of the story. Is it succinct? Is it going from an introduction, which captures you, a story, something that you can learn from, and then is it wrapped up from a conclusion? Is it a conclusion telling you about what we've just learned and what we've heard and what we're going to be taking on going on forward. So those are the three or the five things that generally we look at when doing evaluations. Okay, Matt, um, I'm not going to overload everyone's mind with the, the things that we should be looking at. Um, so over to you to play the video. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dino. Uh, I do appreciate that, that correction. That was also oversight on my behalf as Toastmaster. Normally before every speech, we do invite our evaluator to come up and give us the project objectives and purpose statements. So I do appreciate Dino sharing with you what to look out for whilst watching this video. So thank you very much, Dino. Okay, as we go into watching the video, one last thing to remember. In Toastmasters, we also, as much as we practice public speaking, we also practice a little bit of a workout. That workout is called clapping hands. You will notice that a lot of us clap hands. So if you don't come to Toastmasters for the public speaking, you can come for the exercise and that is clapping hands. So we're gonna be doing a lot of that uh, today. We're normal, we're not losing our minds, we're just exercising. All right, see, without further ado, let's go into watching uh, the video by Cyril Dim Jr. Cyril Dim Jr. Oops, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Where is he? Sorry. Da, 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 da. I saw you now. Yeah, it was the right one. Yeah. Cyril Dim Jr. Ndini. Ndini by Cyril Dim Jr. Ndini. Ndini, Cyril Jr. Dim. Thank you, contest chair. You're welcome. I love that the contest chair sounds more Zimbabwean than I do. In Zimbabwe, we speak Shona. And in this beautiful language, we have a very important word that I'd like to share with you today. In Shona, we say, Ndini, N-D-I-N-I, -I. Ndini, try it, beautiful, it means this is me, in my language we have one word for this very important phrase, this is me, Ndini, this word is special for me now, but growing up, I wasn't always comfortable with who I was. 
You see, even though I grew up in Zimbabwe, my middle name was a long, winding, complicated Nigerian name. Because my father, whom I never knew, was Nigerian. Now, yes, I may know a Nigerian prince or two. Back then, I didn't want a Nigerian name. I wanted a cool name like Martin Luther King Jr. or contest chair. The other kids would make fun of me. They said my name was useful as a password. <laughs> they called my middle name memorably forgettable. They said my middle name was a curse from black magic. I hated my name. Have you ever hated something about yourself? I would argue with mom. I would be so mad at her. You gave me this name. You did this to me. And now everybody makes fun of me because I'm different. And my mom would look at me and say, but son, that name is who you are. It's special. You know, your middle name means that what God has done, no man can change. And I said, Mom, man has changed many things. Okay, look at Chihuahuas. <laughs> that used to be a wolf. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can change my name. And I did. As soon as I turned 18, I had my middle name removed from all my documents. It became my best kept secret. And I have not said that name once ever since. Before I knew it, it was 2018 and I'd landed in college, not in Zimbabwe, not even in Africa, but in the heart of Eastern Europe. It was clear who grew up in the snow and who grew up in the sand. I had never been this different before. The fly in the milk. It felt like I had taken one step forward and 10 steps backwards. But then I met Nick, another fly in the milk, but from Congo. He's got the African boy swag, you know, low, deep voice, speaks very slowly. He's like Mufasa, but in slow motion. <laughs> We're in the library one day and Nick drops his ID. And like a good friend, I pick it up and proceed to read it out loud, including his full name, Nicholas Rolin Sweeney B2. I say, dude, let's say your name three times and see what happens. <laughs> I knew exactly how those words must have felt. But Nick was ready. I have never met anybody with my name. It was a gift from my grandfather and I like it. We laughed and we got kicked out of the library. <laughs> In my heart, I was 18 again, seeing in Nick what I didn't have for myself, acceptance. And for the first time, I started looking around and I realized we're all different. Even Nick was different, but he wasn't just different. He was special because he accepted himself. And for the first time in a long time, I wanted to accept myself too. I looked myself in the mirror and said, Ndini, this, this is me. I know that many of you out there at some point in your life have felt uncomfortable being who you are. Maybe it was your name. Maybe it was the family you came from. 
Maybe it was the school you went to. Maybe you were tall. Maybe you were short. Maybe you have wrinkles, freckles. Maybe you have scars. I know that some of you out there know what it is to be different. And even if you don't feel it, I'm sure you know somebody who does. You are beautifully you. The only you. And no man can change that. So let me invite you to make this very important word a part of your language. Dini, this is me. For my friends here in Nashville and the thousands watching from home, say it with me. This is me. Dini. Beautiful. I haven't had the courage to officially reclaim my name. But here, today, I think we can make a step in the right direction. I was born Cyril Jr. Uche Chukumere Dim. And this is me. Dini. Uh, Matt, can you share that link for us, please? That's amazing. Seriously amazing. Okay. I see our online members are practicing our exercise, but the ones in the club, come on, guys. There we go. There we go. Don't you feel better right now after clapping your hands a bit? I mean, it's going to warm up your hands for the cutlery. Like, think about it that way. But anyway, without digressing any further, that was a speech by Cyril Jr. Tim Ndini. The key takeaway that came to mind for me after watching that story in terms of all of us being storytellers was how Cyril took an experience in his life and he turned it into a story, an empowering story to share with the crowd. I think this is what being in Toastmasters is all about. It's all about finding what are those moments in your life that you can craft into a story. It could be the breakfast you made this morning. It could be the little experience you had with your, child, your children yesterday. It could even be that coworker that pissed you off this week. How do you take that experience and craft it into a story? Because we all have stories to tell. And in Toastmasters, we get to practice telling that story in a way that sticks. Moving on, I'd like to call Tandeka. Could you please give us our time for the speech? And then we will move into a break. And, and Matt, can I ask, um, your intro to that clip, and what you just said, can you uh, make that into a, a mini clip before handing over some more Toastmaster formalities? Because I have some people who need to hear the message that you've just delivered uh, without getting too much. But, but, but your intro and your um, little closing there before you hand over. Does that, does that make sense? Okay, Perfect. Cool. Okay. Madam Timer, could you please give us the time for Cyril Dim, Cyril Junior Dim speech? Thank you, uh, Mr. Toastmaster. Unfortunately, I didn't time the video because it's a video, and I wouldn't be able to to to, to show him his time. No. No. So, excuses, excuses right <laughs> but police, huh? yeah, he, he went beyond the well, that's the five so, minutes. So, I'm, I apologize for that. I'll time the other because I thought I'm timing the impromptu speeches and the hmm. evaluation. I apologize for that. I'll time the next speaker. And uh, with that, we, we, we have a new guest. Maybe you want to welcome him. Yes, before we go for a break. Oh, let's exercise, exercise. <laughs> um, thank you, Cloliso, for supporting our president. 
almost okay. tried to wiggle her way out of that one. So appreciate you supporting her. I hear we do have a guest. Before we go for a break, shall we ask our guests to introduce themselves? Who is our guest? Who is this mystery guest? You are the guest. Please do come to the front if you can, so we can see you and hear you. Sorry, the, the microphone's over here, so that's why you can stand. You can stand by the, yes, the lecture. Yes, the camera can stand. Stand front, stand. Don't worry, don't worry. Can you see yourself? There you are. Yes, this is okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So, my name is Cynthia Maria. I'm from Doug, Houghton. Just pick up here the mic. No, you just speak a little bit louder. Yeah. My voice is not that loud. Probably on the screen. So. Okay, so yeah, uh, I just that's my first event, and uh, I just wanted to get an idea of you know of how things are uh, with those masters. Um, I just saw it online, and uh, I just wanted to take part in it because um, I think the biggest thing is I want to work on my public speaking skills. And communication skills. So I think that's a main reason why. And uh, and I'm quite interested in learning and, and what is how to develop your skills and get better. And uh, I'm excited about connecting to Google. Thank you. Welcome. Our guest from Houghton. Do you know how many Toastmasters clubs are between Bryanston and Houghton and you came to us? Like, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm touched right now. I think that is super amazing. Thank you for joining us and thanks for making the trip. I, I think it's super amazing. All right. As we, yes, sir. Yeah, so is it, um, I've looked at the online events and I think you have online events, but I've struggled to join a few. Is that, like, um, is that an issue on my end? Or is it a thing that I'm restricted and just couldn't get a membership? So how does it go, actually? Because I came here for that reason. I couldn't uh, attend online. So let me check it out first. Maybe find out more. I'll run. Let's get it back then. Yeah. 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 So like, online, is it? Maybe no, it is online. Um, so it's, we'll, we'll have a chat at the end of yeah. the show when we can talk about how we can. Because ideally, there should be an email be sent to you with the link, and then you'll be able to log on. But you're with us in person, we take that win and we, we appreciate it. Go. Uh, do you know, is your guys' breakfast there? Can we take the break now or do we still need to move forward? Are we not having a second uh, video? Is it just the one that we're doing? Just in the best interest of time, we'll just have the one. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. So yeah, breakfast has just arrived, so we'll uh, take a 15-minute break. Okay. As we go into the 15-minute break, uh, I'd like us to, as we're enjoying our breakfast and enjoying our break, please keep in mind the three things that Dino had mentioned. Vocal variety, storytelling, and what was it body language uh, as part of the evaluation segment. Alrighty then. See you guys in 15 minutes. Go check on the kids, go check on the stove, go check on the washing and see you in 15 minutes. Okay. Right, I'm gonna do mm -hmm. Do you have the timer on the... The table topics section of our meeting. Everything okay, Dino? Can you put the, the speaker? Sorry. There you go. All good, Matt. Okay, sweet. So for our table topic session, I will also be running that one. And to give you, to remind you of what the table topic session for today is going to look like is you may be called on as an experienced Toastmaster guest, and I will give you a either a word or an idea, and you are going to have to tell us a story on that. You've got one to two minutes to tell us that story. And 
in the great words of Tanya Langbei, the great thing about table topics is you can either tell us something that is truthful or you can feel free enough to lie through your teeth and nobody will know that you're lying. The important thing is that you enjoy it. So firstly, I will ask an experienced table to uh, experienced Toastmaster. I will give a topic to an experienced Toastmaster so that our visitors and guests can have an idea of how this works. All right, but before we get into table topics, quick exercise again. Let's clap hands for the break. And for the people in the room, let's clap hands for the amazing breakfast that you guys had. And thank you that nobody choked on their breakfast in the club. That would have been a sad part to our meeting. All righty. I'd like to now start off with our table topics. And I will give Toliswa, I think I heard you in the room and I heard you during your introduction. Are you there? Yes. Okay, perfect. Tolisa, please come to the front and I will give you your table topic. You've got up to 30 seconds to just think about the topic before speaking on it, and then you can begin. All right, Tolisa, are you ready? Yes. Your topic is, or your question for the topic is, tell us something that inspires you. Tell us about something that inspires you. Good morning. Once, once again, Toastmasters, visitors, and guests. There are many things that inspire me, depending on the event or the people I am around with, or the situations I have been in. I am inspired by positivity. When I fell down and discouraged, if I come to meet with someone in good spirit, they can easily lift up my spirit as well. I am inspired by the movies I watch that resonate with me. I am inspired by books I read I am inspired by stories that started not so well, but end with positivity. I am inspired every Saturday morning that I come to Toastmasters to hear speech presentations that are inspiring, educational. I come out of this room feeling motivated and inspired and wanting to learn more and grow myself. So there are many things that inspire me. In many situations, in many events. Thank you, Mr. Table. Exercise, exercise, come on, exercise. Thank you very much, Lisa. Uh, Mr. Table Topics Master, I'm sorry I'm late. I had some connectivity issues, so I'm back online. Thank you for joining it's us. It's Tanya. I must say, Clulisa, uh, this has been probably, I feel like that title was just made for you. This is the most confident and authoritative that I've seen you speak as a member. And I thought it was really beautiful. Now I'm really excited for when you give us a full speech, like... Ugh, getting the shivers thinking about it. So thank you very much, Lisa, for sharing with us what inspires you. <laughs> Next, one more trial run, and then we're going to go to our visitors. I'm going to give this one to Rick. Rick, your table topic is going to be a word. Your word that, you can, that you're going to tell us a story on is beetle. Your word is beetle. It can either be an animal or the car, whichever you choose. Rick, Beetle, Beetle, Rick. Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master. I noticed it's a singular beetle rather than plural. But let me talk about beetles in general. These are the most fascinating creatures 
the study of entomology, which of course is a study of insects, which includes beetles, is itself a fascinating topic. Unlike, of course, the study of etymology, which is words, which we have a lot of in Toastmasters, beetles are all about action. Beetles do not stop to converse about things. In fact, beetles are quite solitary generally, except when they need to mate. Beetles are heavily armored. They're like the, the uh, T-72 tank of the insect world. They have bristling spines sticking out of their limbs and often out of their backs as well. If you can think of a small version of a dinosaur, one of those ones with the plates on their backs, that's the kind of image you should have with a beetle. Be very, very grateful that beetles are tiny things and not the size of a Volkswagen beetle, because if they were, very few of us would survive. Thank you, Mr. Topics Master. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Thank you very much, Rick. I love how you eventually brought in the two different variations of beetle into the table topic. That was brilliant. All right, to our guests, now that you've experienced table topics. No, uh, Matt, I'd, I'd, Matt, I'd, I'd also like to give it a go. Um, I know my voice is a bit broken, so I'm tired, but uh, include me in your uh, list with the guests. I will do so. Thank you for volunteering, Tanya. No, my pleasure. So to our guests, now that you've seen how table topics are done, it is your turn. Remember, you are a storyteller. Come up with a story related to something personal in your life and lie if you have to. You are here. <laughs> hey, we are here to practice storytelling. All right. So I want to swivel back to the club quickly. I remember in the club, we've got a visitor and that visitor's name was Ruth. Ruth, would you like to join us in the front? <laughs> Exercise, exercise, exercise. Fantastic. Ruth, your topic. What scares you the most? Ruth, what scares you the most? Uh, thank you very much. What scares me the most is speaking to people in front of people. It's public speaking. I'm scared of public speaking because most of the time I don't know how I'm engaging with the people that are listening to me. Can they hear me? Are they identifying with what I'm saying? Are they there in the moment with me? Is the topic that I'm speaking to something that interests them? That is what scares me about public speaking. And that is what I'm, why I'm here. Because I want to learn to be like those people that I watch on the TED shows when I'm watching the TED shows. They come across as confident, prepared. They look like they know what they're talking about. How does one get to that stage? I don't know. That's what I want to learn. And I want to take that fear out of that public speaking. I want to be able to stand there and then somebody says, I want to be rude when she's speaking. So that is what scares me. And how did they, those people take away that which made them scared when they actually started? I don't know. And how am I going to find out? It's about by listening to other people, by learning, by practicing, by probably being stupid for a while. And then at the end of the day, I think that is what scares me, that I want one day to stand here and say, I'm not scared. Thank you. Wow. Phew. I, I don't know. I don't know about y'all, but I'm I'm trying to be Ruth right now. <laughs> yeah. I want to be Ruth. Are you sure it's your first time speaking in public? You owned that stage and your vo your, your your presence, your body language. 
<sighs> I'm trying to be Ruth right now, guys. Guys, can we exercise for Ruth, please? Absolutely. Uh, can you see that my hands up, uh, Matt? Yes, Tanya. I, I, when I was listening to Ruth, and I'm sorry to interrupt, and it's totally inappropriate, uh, uh, table topics, but I thought it was something I would like to share. Um, Harold Robinson uh, was um, my greatest mentor at uh, Toastmasters. And unfortunately passed away and uh, the one thing that he said of course we can lie uh, through tail topics and be creative and it's always um you know easy to do but um what he said is if it's your story and Ruth this is a message from me to you from Harold if it's your story it's your story it can never be wrong so it doesn't matter what anyone thinks it's your story and the one thing he added when uh, he was mentoring me is he said, the audience is not looking for you to fail. They're actually, um, they're not looking for you to fail. But most importantly, if it's your story, it's your story. Whether it's right, wrong or different, it, it will land. And what you just did was amazing. It was like Harold, who's now in heaven, would be very, very proud of what you just did, Ruth. So, well done. And I've never met you, so I don't even know who you are. I can't see either. So that's beautiful. Um, I expect you. Thank you very much for the words of encouragement, Tanya. Uh, very, very, very beautiful. And it is your story, guys. No, you're not wrong in your story. It is your story. Okay, Bonnie, I see you excited and you're waiting for me to call <laughs> on your name. Are you ready, Bonnie? Uh, yes. Um, it. Okay, your table topic, and I'll, I'll go. I'll go a little easy on this one. Your table topic is going to be a word: food. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Uh, topic Table Master. Um, I love food. Uh, it's funny how you gave me this word because um, I love food. I love cooking. Um, cooking is my passion. And one day I wish that I can be a um, chef. Uh, I, inspire, I, I get inspired by um, beautiful food that looks good and also food that is very nutritious and very healthy. Um, I, I like cooking. I like cooking for my family. I like cooking for my guests. And um, I have a very good passion for food and um, uh, one day I want to be involved in the business of food. Um, I, I believe food is, 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 is a source of our nutrition. They keep us um, healthy. And um, what else can I say about food? <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Exercise, exercise. Well done, Bonnie. I loved, I loved how you stalled until you got to the green card and you're like, yeah, that's it. That was really genius. Um, and you definitely, if you love food, you're definitely at the right club. Breakfast. Like Chef Bonnie in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Chef Bonnie in the house. Right. Next, I want to move, I want to swing to the club. I remember we had a guest today and I think I caught her name as Mashabu, but I'm pretty sure it's Ruth's daughter, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Ruth? You did bring the daughter with, right? Aha, I see her standing up, coming to the front. Could you please repeat your name for me? I think I heard it as Mashabu, but I'm not too sure. Oh, uh, Nyla. Nyla. Oh, Nyla. Yo, where did I get my shovel from, guys? <laughs> Nyla. This is, this is, this is embarrassing. <sighs> Nyla, tell us about a time you made a friend in an unusual, under an unusual circumstance. Rephrase. Tell us the weirdest way in which you made a friend. Yes, 
Okay, so this happened a few years ago. Um, so I met this girl at Stellenbosch when I was studying, and she was from Malawi. And she was just speaking about how, you know, the water is dirty, they don't have clean water. And it made me think of a situation when I went to New Zealand uh, for my sister's graduation. And I needed the bathroom like really, really badly. <laughs> so what I did was I went and I checked if anyone was in the bathroom and my sister was in there and I was pressed. Like, you know, you just can't walk and you like, you can be, you know, <laughs> and this was in the mid middle of the evening and, I didn't know how long she was going to take. So what I did was I took one of the water bottles <laughs> in the shell and I peed in the water bottle. <laughs> and afterwards, I poured the pee out into the sink. And then I, I said to myself, okay, I'm going to rinse this water bottle tomorrow morning and I'll throw it away. Yeah. Anyways, I'm busy sleeping. I wake up and I see my sister filling up that water bottle with water. <laughs> She's and she's like to my dad, Papa, why does this water taste so funny? And here I'm thinking, oh no, it's, it's the water bottle that I'm peeing. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't tell her, but this is the story that I told my friend, you know, no clean water. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I said to myself that when my sister gets married, that's the story I will tell oh, right. when we're doing the speeches. So I haven't told it to this day. Yeah. Well done. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Well, well done. done. <laughs> Very <Yeah>. intimate. <laughs> but well done. <laughs> that, that naughty water. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never done that. <laughs> I'm actually jealous right now. <laughs> uh, Madam Timer, do we still have time? Because I've still got table topics and I've still got people. Do we and I'm, I, I want in. I want in. Yeah. And Matt, um, I think the evaluations will take about 15 minutes. So you've probably got another two <coughs> table topics. Okay, perfect. And I think I've got two more, and I've got two more people. Hopefully I can squeeze in a third person and then everybody has got. Okay. We're going to move to our next participant who's going to give us a table topic. Tanya, are you ready for this? I'm scared because I hate table topics, but I'm in. <laughs> it's quite interesting that you start with the word scared because the table topic that I had for you was, tell us about something that scared you a lot. Not fear, scared. There's a big difference between the two. Tell us about what's, something. What's, it, what's the difference? Fear is, for example, standing in front of people. There's the fear because you're being judged, for example. Scared is when a dog is about to bite you and you run away. Does that, does that highlight the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get into time again, once you... You just calm down. It's one to two minutes. Um, so I'm going to start now. Thank you, uh, Mr. Table Topics. Master. Um, fear is something that I will struggle with forever because public speaking is very intimidating. But uh, you spoke about scared more than fear um, in your uh, topic. And having lost so much vision in the last month, it's been incredibly scary. Uh, what has been interesting is my uh, appreciation or increased usage of touch and smell, I guess. So, I mean, we have many senses. And the um, doctors I'm working with, uh, with regards to my eyes, are amazing because they... Okay, they, my eyes have contracted a little bit, which they just fix with the you know drops and stuff, which I, I hate drugs, so, uh, but I'm doing it. But the most important thing is every single one of them talks about brain retraining. And I think it's something that I can refer to when I think of table, to table topics, 
and toe sponsors in general. Uh, we are just having to retrain our brains to say it's not as scary as we think it is. And we should not be fearful of it either. Uh, we just need to go through the motions of doing the homework. So I call it homework now. It's training, but basically it's homework. And every day, uh, the uh, ophthalmologist is just saying, do another 15 minutes of training and your brain will reconnect with your eyes. And I think a lot of that also is um, retraining our brain to connect with our emotions. Thank you, Mr. Table Topics, Master. Thank you very much for sharing with us what scared you a lot, Tanya. Mm, it's been tough. Toughest period. Um, no, it's been tough. Anyway, there you go. Oh, and that comes back to something Matt, you said earlier. You know, table topics, it's so easy when you talk to your own story. Uh, if you're brave enough or scared enough to share personal information, uh, it's uh, and and for uh, I see we've got quite a few new people in the meeting that I, I think we can see quite a uh, well I can't see but I think there's a lot of new people. Uh, my first table topic um, speech wasn't even thirty seconds um, because Dino gave me a topic that was called A B C you know that was like what the hell. Am I going to do with something called ABC? And when I learned um, that the key is to just speak about something personal, it became much easier. Um, it's not always appreciated. So, Matt and uh, Tandeka, I hope you are uh, okay with that. So, yeah, that's just me rambling. Thank you, Tanya. And you've mentioned something very important. Most people don't make it past the first 45 seconds and all of you that have gone so far have reached at least one minute. And I think that deserves... Yeah, I agree. Right. And I didn't actually make 30 seconds. It was 29. I just wanted it up. <laughs> Sounds better. Rosemary, are you ready for your table? Yes, I am. Okay, Rosemary, you have been voted in as president of the board. Give us your motivational speech. Ooh. Ooh. Please repeat that. You have just been voted in as part of the Toastmasters board. Give us a motivational speech. Okay. Uh... First of all, as a new chair of the Toastmasters, I can say everyone is welcome. And everyone has to believe in themselves that you can do it. Like it might seem scary, but like each and every person in life, there's somewhere where you have to start. Because like if you never start, you never know where you will go or what will happen. So I'm proud of everybody like who decided that they want to start with us in this journey of Toastmasters. Um, know that it will be difficult and sometimes you will feel like you want to quit, but like quitting is not an option. Like whatever happened, like if you tremble, tremble, if you cry, cry, but like never go back. Cause like when you go back, you'll be more frustrated than like not starting is more frustrating than like starting. So all I can say is like, let's hold each other's hands and like, let's do it together and know that like whatever happens, uh, it will happen and we are in here for each other just to motivate each other. Thank you. Exercise. I love that. That's beautiful. <clears throat> nice. Madam, Madam President, uh, I think we need to be wary of this one. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> right. And last but certainly not least is our guest from all the way from Houghton. I didn't catch your name at the beginning. Uh, it was a bit soft. Is he still with us? Yeah, Simpiwe. Simpiwe. 
Ah, fantastic. Simpiwe, we're going to uh, wrap up our table topics with you. Okay. Right, Simpiwe, are you ready for your table topic? All right, this one, I think this one is a very relatable one. Tell us about the wildest birthday party you have had. <laughs> I'll speak about something that's very close to that. It was a celebration we had in our final year uh, trip. Yeah. Okay, so, um, it was my final year in Matric, I mean, final year high school in Matric. And um, a couple of friends of mine decided to do something big. Um, we didn't go on vacation, I think it was like a check, uh, check back when I was. But we're like, it's all right, you know, we'll do our own thing. And, uh, you know, I've got uh, my friends, uh, one of those guys who are uh, party people, you know, the people's person. And um, they, are, they are like the life of the party. So I knew that, you know, if you have the right people, you just have a venue. And it's just a couple of resources and we can set up a party that can be remember for a long time. So the time came and uh, we gathered at my friend's house. And that afternoon, um, we sent a number of invitations. And on time, was is like, up. so on the day, at a specific time set out, we realized that things were going slow. Um, only a few friends of ours that we, we knew came through. But a number of our kids didn't come through. So, you know, sort of scratching our heads, wondering if maybe we should go into vacation. And from there, you know, we were just like, we just sit down and thought about it. Like, you know, are we, are we as popular as Are we as interesting as It doesn't seem like it. So after a few minutes, um, we just got a few cars coming in, slowly, slowly but surely. And the numbers started rolling, started rolling, started rolling. It was looking promising, and this is places. And, uh, you know, after a few more minutes, um, this massive, this massive taxi just filled the people at the, at the, at the, at the house we were at, my friend's house. And once that happened, I think that's a problem, like the party took off. So we all came in and we had the time of our lives. Honestly, we parted two days straight. So from that very same day, it went on two days straight. So we finally got kicked out when our, like my friend's uh, parents came back. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we had to go. Um, so uh, like, I think that was a very interesting experience considering, you know, it was a very uh, difficult year for us. Um, we found ourselves in a lot of trouble at Duke. So just letting off, just blowing some steam and um, signing off high school, I think that was a very good way to go out. So, Thank you. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Thank you very much, Simpiwe, for sharing that really personal story uh, around like party matric. <laughs> Always interesting when 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 the taxi comes full of people, you know uh, it's on now. It's on. So anyway, appreciate you sharing that. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I got topics for days. And I know you have stories for days more because you are all storytellers. Something that has become very apparent just from table topics. By a show of hands, is, every, is anybody dead yet? Okay. <laughs> very smart. I thought I was going to catch you. Damn it. <laughs> but you're all still alive. And... You have all made it through one, probably one of the scariest parts of speaking, standing in front of people and sharing a story. But you've all done it spectacularly well and you've made it past the one minute mark. So I'd like to congratulate you for that and do my quick exercise for you on that. As we try close up table topics, if you ever do leave here today, the one thing that I want you to take away from the table topic session is that you are a storyteller. You do have a story to share. You just need to find the topic and you need to be brave enough to share your story. With that being said, I will wrap up my session as table topics master and ask Mr. Evaluator to come to the front and please lead us into our third session of the meeting, and that is the evaluation session. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dino Lupini, our roundtable, round robin evaluator for today. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic table topic sessions. Hopefully, I can carry on the, the learnings from that. So, the way that we're going to be running this now is that we are all going to be adding some input into evaluating the contests, the winning contest winners, uh, Cyril Dim, who evaluate his speech. So I'm just going to give my little introduction of how I thought he did. And then I would like you guys to also just maybe give some inputs on that. Just have a little stand and then uh, just maybe one or two things that was in that structure, something really good, something he could have maybe improved on. And then uh, like maybe what, what you would like to see him again do. And let's just try not repeat. So that's, that's going to be a little bit hard. So you kind of you want to go first because then it's, yeah, you're getting the good stuff. Okay, cool. So, Madam Timekeeper, before I start, uh, two to three minutes, right? Matt, uh, that last joke that you just kicked off with, the end of your table topic session with, was shocking. Pretty much the same as Cyril's jokes. A lot of them fell flat. I don't know if you heard the Zimbabwean joke. Madam Chair, your voice sounds more Zimbabwean than mine. I was like, oh. Didn't hear any of those, and guy, you spoke, you said three words. How are we supposed to understand context and completely flat? Then he, he carried on talking, he had, he had a lot of little jokes, but by the end of it, I was chuckling. I was like, This guy, these jokes may seem lame, but he's open to making them, and we're getting to like him more and more. And more. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Rough start. But I enjoyed it. So Cyril spoke about his speech was broken down into, he spoke about uh, Ndini, this is me, and he explained the word. And then it moved down into his life and his name and kind of like how he dissolved his middle name because it's unforgettable. Uh, unforgettable. Oh, yeah, forgettable. Memorably yeah, forgettable. Yeah. Thank you. Lovely description there. And then he went down into uh, how we actually supposed to be more unique. And unique is interesting. It's funny. You think unique and different, kind of the same word, but like different is synonymous. That it's got this negative connotations. And he kind of explained that. But unique is beautiful and it's precious. And that's what he kind of moved slowly into that. Yes, whilst in Europe, he was a uh, one of the sand people, not one of the snow people. And yes, he was different. But he, the more he started speaking to his Congolese friend, Mufasa, a very really deep voice, very slow. Like you got the context of who he was. You got to understand it. This is these are beautiful people that he's creating. Lovely context. And the way that he wrapped up was. Everybody, you have to be yourself. And funny enough, on the way here, uh, two Toastmasters, one of the radio presenters actually said this, made a quote of, you need to be yourself because everybody else is taken. Beautiful context. I, lo I love that alignment. And that's what Indini, uh, sorry, Cyril did. He ended off with explaining Indini this is who I am. He wrapped up his whole speech into a beautiful little uh, bow. And then he finished off with uh, about us needing to be more, showing more of ourselves. And then that's what he says. From here, I am, he said his entire note, which I wasn't quick enough to write now. So I really loved the pace that he spoke. He gave pauses on... Uh, when he said a joke, gave us time to think. And just one thing I would like him to maybe improve. He did seem a little bit robotic initially. And I guess it's coming onto a massive stage. Also the poor video that we had there, he seemed a little bit robotic in his interaction. It wasn't warm, but he, he 
engaged into it. And one thing I would like him to challenge himself on is try win another competition. Let's go for it. Uh, honestly, I, I don't know what we ask him. Ask him. Tell him where he can improve or challenge himself. So that is a fantastic speech, and he is going to do amazing things going on. Thank you. Time flies in the you up here. Just zaps away. Three minutes. Thank you. Uh, sorry, how long did I speak for then? Sorry. Give me a one second. Okay. Apologies. You've got a 30 second leeway when you, when you have your two to three minutes. Excellent. So I would like to open up the floor now to whoever would like to add some input into uh, Sirleton's uh, speech, leaning on the fact that we would like you to talk about something good, something you can improve on, and I'm just wrapping it up. If anybody would like to give it a go, a little bit of a shot. Matt, um, I love the way that you give evaluation. So can you give me a, a quick little snippet of what you think uh, Cyril could improve on? Because you've seen his journey uh, throughout the competitions. Mm. <laughs> so, <clears throat> evaluation of Cyril Tim, and one thing that I think he can improve on. Maybe this is just specific to the contest and them not being props, but something that Cyril can improve on was how well he uses the stage space. As we noticed from Cyril's presentation, Cyril is very, in terms of body language, he's super. He's pointing to the contest chair, he's pointing to the audience. He's, his entire body is engaged in the speech but he's very limited, like me right now, in how well he was using the stage. For the most part, I felt that if I was in the audience, if I was on this side, I would have felt left out because most of the time when he was pointing, he was pointing to the people that were right in front of him and he would always stand there or to the contest chair. So if I were on stage and something that I would suggest is if you're on stage and you want to engage with the crowd, if you are going to find yourself moving, uh, I would suggest you, if you are going to find yourself engaging with the crowd, I would suggest moving and pointing to the crowd that's to your left, moving to the center, crowd that's in your front and crowd that's on your right. That way you are engaging with the entire crowd, even though you're just speaking to, to one person. The other thing that I thought Cyril could improve on was the use of props. In all these other videos and all these other public speaking journeys, he would always have a prop on stage, be it a chair or a baton, something that adds to the storytelling that he had. In this speech, when he spoke about the friend's ID, I was really looking forward to him pulling out his ID card or dropping it on the floor and acting like he was picking it up. All of that for me are what adds to good components of a story. And I believe if we are going to be telling stories, we should think of stories like a movie. Uh, in movies, it's more than just the words. It's also, what is the actor picking up? What are they reaching out for? It's all adding to the story. So although he gave a really good speech. I really enjoyed your speech, Cyril. And as we all saw, he gave a really good speech. I would love to see you use a little bit more stage space and a little bit more props in telling your story. Thanks, Matt. Thank Thank you. You. Can I um, give th 30 seconds? Yeah, this uh, match. Do you have time? Uh, you, you took quite a bit of time there. Thank you very much. 30 seconds. Done. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm. And you go for it, please. Well, I'm moving, moving left to right, uh, I think it does add value uh, to Matt's point. But what I love about my first uh, few lessons at Toastmasters is a purposeful gesture. So just movement from left to right is one thing. It makes it inclusive, of course, to the audience. But purposeful uh, gestures was something that uh, took me a while to learn. And I was watching AGT, America's Got Talent, this week. And this one uh, singer um, was very, very timid, um, but 
uh, his confidence level built up during his song to the point that he actually dropped his mic at the end. He was like, bang, dropped his mic to say, I've done it. And he actually didn't care what the judges thought anymore because it was a purpose, purposeful gesture. So movement is one thing, being inclusive, absolutely, of, of the audience, but a purposeful gesture is uh, the most powerful one. And sometimes it even comes in the version of silence. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. Thanks, Simon. Thank you very much. Excellent. Just talking about movement on a stage, what I really liked about what he did is our challenge uh, that you uh, met and Tanya, the one thing he did well was when he spoke about his mother, he went to the one side of the stage and he, he had this, this part of the stage was his mom. I don't know if you realize that he spoke and then he, when he carried on the conversation, he moved out of that space, he had the conversation and then he's like, no, mother said, this is why I gave you that name. And then he's like, becoming unique and all that. So it is, it's literally in our minds automatically, ah, this is Cyril's mom, that's Cyril, no, he's, he's chatting between the yeah. two. So that's, the that's, a pur pur that's a pur purposeful movement. Yeah, that was very powerful. Great. Correct. Who would like to provide a... Can I? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is short time. Okay, cool. Yeah. That when he ultimately told us this word, or this name, for me, I had been waiting. I don't know whether it's a good strategy or bad strategy. It took too long to tell us, and when he told us the way to to Chekumele, it was too short. And I've been looking uh, forward. His to, middle name. Yes. Okay. Because his whole speech is about this massive name. Massive yeah. name that got him into this whole mental exercise and yeah. evaluating his life and stuff like that. Yeah. Thank you. So say the middle name again. We would say two. Is that, is that the name? That's the name. And that's short. That's it. Okay. Well, I think the description is a lovely one. What God has created, man cannot take yeah, away. That's so that, yeah, that's still open up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's funny how you build that up in your mind. Like, oh, what could it be? What could it be? Yeah. The problem I, what I could say, I can add on to that, he says it only once. Yes, just once. Once. The entire speech, you built me up to it. So, yeah. So, uh, can I yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I thought in terms of the good thing, uh, his poses for me they worked quite well. And I thought I could hear um, every word mm -hmm. that he was uh, speaking about. Uh, where I, I also think that he could do better in terms of that word that we're all waiting for. Um, I think that it was not only too short for me, but I actually didn't really hear it. And then I ended up also thinking that he hasn't really grasped this thing. He doesn't like it. He still doesn't like it. The word the name, uh, name. So there's a disconnect between what he's actually speaking yeah. about and what he's actually feeling. Yes, because it was almost like I'm saying so quickly because he, he, actually, he actually doesn't uh, yeah. even notice it. Yeah. I think there's a problem with it. Thank you for that. Excellent. Yeah. So, so that comes down to context and like that emotional connection with your speech. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> Anybody on mine that'd like to add some input? Uh, quick little 30 second evaluation. Okay. Well, then I'm going to wrap up. Thank you, everybody, for participating in the round robin uh, evaluation session. It is very important to have some outside context in the uh, seeing where you can improve on in your speaking abilities. Um, so this section of the Toastmasters is called, uh, the evaluation section is called Breakfast of Champions. So it is something to really take in so that you can move forward and uh, improve yourself. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Table, uh, to Mr. Toastmaster, thank you. I finished my section, over to you. Exercise, exercise, exercise for everybody in the room and for our amazing lead evaluator. For the benefit of our guests, sometimes if you come into a meeting and you experience the evaluation session of a meeting, building on to what Dino said, it can feel like we're just there being critical and negative, but that's not what's going on. 
We are looking for things that we thought were done brilliantly, areas for improvement and ways that the speaker can challenge themselves. Every evaluation of your speech that you get in Toastmasters will always be subjective to the person that is listening to you. So always keep that in mind. The evaluation is a reflection of a speech and not of you. As a person, you are perfect, but your speaking is not. And our evaluations are there to build on your speaking skills and not take away from them. So don't and, be... Uh, Matt, by you, and I, um, you and I share uh, music um, as a way of communicating. Uh, you must never ever forget that you are in life, no matter where you are in your life. Um, the, the Toastmaster program is about looking at the speech, not the person. You are all enough. I love that. You are enough. It's about the speech, not you as the person. Okay, without further ado, I'm going to wrap up my role as Toastmaster in under three minutes. I'd like to start off by inviting our different role players that made this meeting a success. Madam Timer, can we start off with you and please tell us how good did we do on time? Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. We did very well as a group. On table topics, for this one, you were supposed to speak for two minutes. You spoke for one minute, 40 seconds. And Rick, you were supposed to speak for two minutes. You spoke for one minute, 42 seconds. Yay! And <laughs> our guests, you spoke for one minute, 36 seconds. Brilliant. Well done. Bonnie, our guest online, you also spoke for one minute. Well done. And Naila, our guest, you spoke for one minute, 42 seconds. Woohoo! Tanya, online, you spoke for one minute, 58 seconds. Spot on. <laughs> Rosemary, online, you spoke for one minute, 10 seconds. <laughs> and Kiki, our guest, you spoke for two minutes, 15 seconds. But you still will be in the 30 second um, grace period. So that yes. Okay. Well, with, with evaluations, do you know you were supposed to speak for two to three minutes, which means you, you should have spoken for three minutes. You were in three minutes, 31 seconds. Less than one second outside. Matt, two minutes. And Tanya, one minute. I didn't time Tanya and on the evaluation. Yeah, but my, mine was in, uh, impromptu, hey, Matt? So don't put that, that on my records, Matt. Okay. You, there had, go. You, had two, you, you had those editions which I did in time. And then with Euphoria, I'm handing over to our teacher. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Timekeeper. Uh, we did really good on time, so congratulations to all of you. Please, we are wrapping up the exercise. We are cooling down now. Clap slower. <laughs> that is so fun. All right, now I'd like to call on our our counter grammarian. Rick, are you with us? I am indeed. I apparently cannot start my video because the host has stopped it. I'm not sure what this uh, was going on there. Okay, now I can apparently know. Let's try again. Oh, okay. I'm on, I'm, I'm on camera. Good. Thank you. Right. 
in my role as R counter, I didn't find much to comment on. I believe I had some unintended pauses myself. Uh, Dino had two that I counted, three ums, ahs, and ers. Dino, your crutch word seems to be kind of, of which I got two. So watch out for that one, please. And I didn't really pick up any other things in my role as R counter. As grammarian, I was particularly taken by Dino's requoting of be yourself, everyone else is taken, something worth remembering. The only person who used the word of the day was Tandeko, who's just done so, so well done there. Uh, none of us, including me, actually managed to squeeze it in. I would like to mention some potential for improvement for some of the things that Matt said. Subjective to the person, I find that a bit awkward. I think what you mean is it has to, you were saying it's to do with the speech, not the person, but uh, I didn't quite get what you were meaning there by subjective to the person. And then one that seems to crop up quite frequently in Toastmasters without further ado. At least that's how it comes across. Now, adieu is the French word for goodbye, but goodbye, I'm not going to see you again kind of thing, rather than we will meet again. Whereas we, the phrase is actually without further ado, without any more hue and cry, as it were, without any more proceedings. So just watch that one. Uh, and you did it twice, so uh, it certainly sounded like adieu to me. Maybe my hearing is not so good, and that's entirely possible as well, but uh, focus on without further ado. And that's about all I have to say as so, Mary. Uh, Matt, Matt, uh, Matt, uh, sorry, Rick. Can you yes. just uh, say those two phrases again? Because I they sounded the same to me. And I also might have a hearing problem. But can you just say the two phrases? Well, adieu, adieu, adieu is the French word for goodbye, or goodbye, adieu. I'm not going to see you again. So it sounded uh -huh. like without further adieu, instead of without further adieu. Wow, I mean, they're so similar. That's pretty tough. So Possibly. We had somebody at Mariswe who was, was always saying without further adieu. So, so I'm quite tuned in on that one. Thank and you, if you spell them, so no, when make no, those, I think this is an important one. Is it uh, uh, if you were to spell well, it, the last I word do, is a do is spelled a d o, a do, a d o, and the French word that we shouldn't be putting in is a do, a d i e u. Okay, I think it's a big lesson for all of us to to to, to take on because. I didn't know that. Thanks, Rick. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Rick, for that in-depth uh, grammarian report. Language is so important. And I think even in storytelling, we've got to acknowledge how important language is and what it means to the person on the other side. So thank you for that in-depth grammarian report, sharing with us the importance of language. Now I have wrapped up my role as Toastmaster. We are two minutes over time, but we are wrapping it up now in the next five minutes. I will close off by saying that, reiterating that from today, the major key lesson as a visitor, as a guest, Oh, that is more or less the same thing, but as a visitor, a guest or member of the Toastmasters organization, I want us to remember that, yes, we are here to improve our communication skills and public speaking, and all of that can be really frightening and scary, standing in front of people and speaking. But the important thing is that we are all storytellers, and we are here to tell, not just tell our stories, but craft our stories. 
the more we craft our stories, the more we share our stories, and the more you share your story, the more people you will impact in your environment, because that is the power of stories. You are a storyteller. Thank you very much, Rick. I acknowledge the, the message that you've sent through. All right, Madam President, uh, over to you for club business, and then we can end off our meeting. Thank you all for exercising with me. Give me one last exercise, and this time we're just going to go extra slow. Okay, we can go fast. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Toastmaster, for that wonderful program and all the participants. Thank you so much. And I hope that everybody felt, did really feel what Tana spoke about, that you are not the one being evaluated, but your speech is being evaluated or your participation is being evaluated so that you can improve. Without further ado, I'd like to invite any last comments in terms of the experience on the meeting. Um, first, I'll start with our guests. Any of our guests want to make any input in terms of how was, their, how, how was your experience today at the club? The volunteer? A lot of old stuff. For me, it was a good experience. Um, very practical. And I also think I learned a bit on the first day. Um, yeah, from the video and also from the uh, feedback, yeah, in the interaction. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was obviously very nervous. I didn't realize we were going to speak on the first day. But um, you know, we can tell that we did a lot of things I could learn to take back home. We're also very proud in, that you were so brave and told us your story. <laughs> the people. <laughs> yeah, so for me, um, quite interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Hopefully, you can join us. And online, I can, I can go first. Um, I'd like to say thank you so much for a wonderful session. Um, it was very insightful and uh, I'm very excited. I've been dragging my feet to join these sessions because I'm very scared of public speaking. And I was like, oh, let me just give it a go. But uh, it really exceeded my expectations and looking forward to joining the club and also attending a lot of these sessions. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Loliwa. All of them. Yes, of public speaking, but we're not afraid of it. So, yay. Um, anyone else online? I think we are, you know. Fantastic morning. Thank you very much. Well, with that, thank you so much, everybody. I hope you enjoy the remaining part of your Saturday and the weekend. Uh, please join us again next time. You will kindly make sure that you put your details on our register so that we can communicate with you and give you more dates on, on the next meeting. And we hope you'll join us. But I declare the meeting closed. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.